Check, 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 I'm good. So I'm Max Ron, Max, Max Ron, CWB Association Welding Podcast, Pod, Pod, Podcast. Today we have a really cool guest, Welding Podcast. The show is about to begin. Hello and welcome to another edition of the CWB Association podcast. My name is Max Duran and we are here with a very special guest coming to us from Quebec. And it's going to be great because I have lots of questions about Quebec and the welding trades and the steel trades going on there. Today we have Jonathan Corriveau coming to us. How are you doing, Jonathan? I'm doing very good. Doing great. And do people call you John or Jonathan? Uh, both, both. There's no problem with that. Uh, a lot of my students are calling me John. It's easier for them. It's faster for them. Hey, John, John, come over here. I need some help. It's it's faster <laughs> for them. So there's no problem with that. <laughs> All right. And so let's start at the beginning here, Jonathan. And thank you for being on the show. Uh, you teach at the Lennoxville Vocational Training Center. Did I think I got that correct? Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And I'm, you are I'm, a welding and steel steel fab instructor. Absolutely. So we're teaching the welding and fitting course. Uh, so basically it's a 1800 hour program. Uh, so we're touching all the welding process. We're touching also the uh, cutting process, but we're doing a lot of assembling. Uh, so we're showing them like uh, the basics and then we move on to more complex assemblies. Uh, so basically we were preparing our students to be ready for uh, the trade. Um, and we're not focusing on only one aspect of the trade. So we're focusing on our students to be able to do whatever they can in every different type of environment. So, you know, there's two things in the name, Lennoxville. Where is this? Where is your school? <laughs> Lennoxville is in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Uh, so it's about an hour and a half from Montreal. Um, at two hours and a half, three hours from Quebec City. Uh, we're in kind of a far away in a field. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> um, they decided to put our school quite far away from the um, uh, the town, the, the downtown. Uh, I don't know why they decided that uh, many <laughs> years ago, but uh, still uh, we're starting to have more and more students that are coming. We're starting to have, uh, our name is spoken more uh now than it was a couple of years ago uh it's only my fourth year over here uh so basically uh i started uh i started teaching somewhere else i started teaching in cowansville uh for the same school board so it's an english school board it's eastern township school board which is probably one of the biggest school board that we have in quebec uh for the territory i'm speaking of uh, basically, we're touching from uh, Cowansville to um, to 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 Lac Megantic, uh, which is kind of about I would say maybe three hour drive in between. So just mm -hmm. like the territory is is huge. Now, and the next part of the title is vocational training. And so you know, are you uh, a training center for many different trades? Is it just the steel trades? What does the your your training center cover, and you know what what is it that you your team focuses on? Well, in fact, there's other trades over here. Uh, we have the machining also, uh, machining techniques that is uh, also learned over here. Uh, teach and learn. Uh, we have uh, secretarials, uh, sales. Um, we have uh, also. Um, how can we say that it's a préposé um, bénéficiaire that's uh, kind of uh, more n close to the nurse. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, what else? What else? We also Let's have. Uh, I got uh, have... 24U. I'm looking at your website right now. So <laughs> accounting, health and the nursing care, high pressure welding. Uh, yeah. Professional sales. So it's a fairly good size college. Well, in fact, we're a very, very small size okay. school. Uh, we don't have big groups. Well, in fact, we're the only one in welding that has more than 20 students. Uh, this year, I'm starting a new court. Uh, basically, we're going to have like three groups of uh, mm -hmm. 18 students each. 
So basically, we're the one that are bringing the money in the center so far. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have a lot of students that have registered, but there's also the online training that is uh, that started during the COVID time, which we keep up also. And that's a that's a, that's something great because some of the other program they can teach online for students that are in Montreal, for example, in Cécile. Mm -hmm. uh, places that are really, really far away, they can just register on our website and they have their online training and they are have, they will be provided and then have their diploma just by uh, staying at home. So that's, uh, for some of the trades, that's really cool. For us in welding, that's a challenge, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> for other well, trades, that's really neat. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. 18 students per cohort for welding, that's large. That's bigger then most colleges will teach at a time. You know, usually 12 to 14 is about anybody ever wants to take on as a welding instructor. 18 students is a lot at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Last year, I started a group with uh, 20 students. Uh, two left at the beginning of the year, but, you know, 20 students at the same time. And the thing is that we have many options. Eh? It's not only uh, we have kind of a regular course, which is a... Uh, uh, a full-time training, 7.5 hours, 35 hours per week. Uh, the students are following this path and 14 months they have their diploma if they're good mm -hmm. uh, and if they succeed in all the, the, the modules. But uh, we also have uh, the uh, ATE, which is the Alternance Travail Etudes. So they are in a shop. They are already hired by a company and they come over here to continue the training. Uh, so basically, we have some parts that are done in the industry, but many others that are done in the school. And the other option, which is what I think, and the one that I'm teaching the most, <laughs> it's what I think the 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 best choice that you know students can do is the two for you path. Mm -hmm. uh, the two for you means that you're gonna have your when you're gonna finish your training, you will have two diplomas. Uh, so they're able to follow their uh, high school courses, so like the French, English, math courses, so they will have their credit for their, uh, the, you know, the, those, um, those 12, uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then after uh, three days per week, they are with us in the trade. So I have students that are starting with us at uh, 15 years old and at uh, 17 they have their both of their uh, diplomas so they have their high school diploma and they have their trade and training diploma so that's that's an awesome new course that we're offering over here in Quebec um and you know there's a lot of students that are struggling now in school they don't want to get stuck on the chair they want to move mm -hmm. they want to do something well that option well is really good for them that's awesome so I got lots of questions already written down about your school. I'm very interested about how this works. You know, as an outsider, you know, outside of Quebec, Quebec is a bit of a mystery. You know, <laughs> it is. It, it, it is. is. And and I, I have many I have many friends in Quebec, and even my friends in Quebec, Quebec is a bit of a mystery in terms of apprenticeship and school and trades and you know the different pathways. So I'm gonna, I'm going to ask lots of questions about that. But uh, before we get to that point, I want to ask about you, Jonathan. You know. You know, are you a welder? Did you work as a welder? What? How did you end up being a welding instructor? Oh boy, uh, that's a that's a very large question, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's start with uh, basically my high school path. I I I was not, you know, I I didn't really enjoy being in school. I didn't like the way it was, you know, mm -hmm. it was in school overall. Um, my father had his own company of maintenance and repairing, uh, industrial maintenance and repairs. So I did a little, a little bit of working with him. My uncle was a welder in a pulp and paper company, big company here, uh, close to Sherbrooke in Windsor. Um, and, um, that, that is probably the thing that decided me to go in a trade like welding. Uh, at first I registered for machining. Uh, but uh, there was no place available for me. So my second choice was welding. I oh. was on the list, on the waiting list. And after two weeks, they called me back and say, hey, uh, there's a place for you. So just uh, start it up. But I was two weeks behind all the others. So I had to catch up two weeks. Uh, and where did you I, go for your training? I did my course at the 24 Juin in Sherbrooke. 
Um, I would say that the first the first hour I got there with the teacher that I got, I, I can mention the guys that I had, eh? Can I? Yeah, you, <laughs> okay. you can mention whoever you want, yeah. Okay, good, perfect. So I had Danny Blé as a, a, a welding instructor, which is a passionate teacher, uh, and he transferred his passion right away to me. And I said, wow, that's that's what I want to do. That's, you know, that's, that's the thing that probably I'm going to be able to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I started the uh, started the course. Uh, the course was in two years. During the summer, we were able to find a job in welding. So I started working for a company, Les Installations Soudain. Uh, so we were moving around Quebec. We were, uh, you know, repairing and doing a lot of welding in uh, sawmills, pulp and paper companies. Uh, so I really enjoy my summer during the whole time that I was doing it. I said, "Wow, that's." No, that's that's the thing, you know. That's that's what I like to do. So um, when I finished my training, I started working uh, for uh, Kruger in Bromptonville. That's a pulp and paper company, and basically I was doing a lot of repair, uh, a lot of repair on different type of material, a lot of repair mm -hmm. with a lot of pressure on the back of you. Right? There's a mm -hmm. machine is broken; it has to restart. So it's a million dollar per hour when it stops. So don't waste too much time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's always that constant pressure. There's always that constant, you know, that uh, uh, that aspect of hey, you need to do with this and you need to do this right because you don't want to stop back again and restart all over again. And it was not always in a perfect situation. Eh? The, the loader is broken in the yard. You have to mm -hmm. repair it over there. Hey, and all, uh, the, all the oil spilt out. It's a big absolutely. mess. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you weld on a steam pipe uh, that is still running. Well, okay, mm. that, that's what you have to do, you know? So that was a constant challenge. That's what I really like with this job. Fortunately, um, that was just a contract. So I ended up uh, doing another, uh, going to find out some other, uh, other job. So I started working in um, a sheet metal company. So we were doing a lot of ventilation, very thin material, which was completely the opposite of what mm -hmm. I was doing in Kruger. Uh, so I learned different stuff from other guys also. The old timers, they show me little tricks and I was just like, hey, wow, that's neat. That's a, another aspect, you know, that's something new that I didn't, I haven't covered in school. So, you know, I'm, I, I was doing a lot of uh, uh, sanitary uh, countertops and stuff like that, conveyors, uh, uh, piping, a lot of aluminum with TIG, uh, which was not a process that was, you know, at the beginning, it was not my favorite process, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Kruger called me back, uh, started working again for them, did another contract, did some contracts for other companies as well. Uh, ended up working in Ontario for some contracts, uh, Norton, Ontario, um, Basically, uh, a lot of rod, a lot of MIG, a lot of flux core, a lot of TIG. You know, I've touched a, a lot of different process. And uh, then I decided to do my high pressure course. So I did my high pressure welding, same thing in the 24 Juin. Uh, started that, finished, uh, you know, the, the training was three days per week. Well, three nights per week. I was working full time with overtime at the same time. So basically, I was not seeing anyone, but hey, that's 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 the way it is, eh? Yeah. So um, so yeah, I finished my course. Uh, continued working in there. Continued working for another companies as well, and Mechanic Borgia, which closed down a couple of years ago. And uh, then I had an opportunity from Mr. Peter Lecomte, uh, which was a welding instructor in uh, the 24 Juin. I was the guy that gave me my course in high pressure. Uh, he said, well, you know, we have some opportunities maybe for you to become a teacher. So would you like to try it out? And I said, well, OK, I can do some replacement, but I don't, you know, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm already working a lot. I don't want to have more than that. Started doing it, uh, started doing it with kind of a rough group. Uh, <laughs> they were not listening. They and threw you I to the was, wolves? <laughs> oh, boy. I, I was the youngest, probably the mm -hmm. youngest guy in the whole place there. They said, you know, you know, you're really there to teach us something. You know, you, you don't have a big background of experience and so on. So that just, uh, you know, shut down the door there. And it, it said, mm -hmm. okay, my, my dreams disappeared. 
I, I'm probably not going to be a teacher. Yeah. So uh, continued working, and then Danny Blais called me back, the teacher from uh, that I got at, for my uh, DEP and uh, welding and fitting. Call me back and say I have a contract at BRP. I would like you to be uh, to to be there with me to help me. Uh, so gave a training over there at BRP directly in the industry. I loved it. I loved it. And he said, well, you know, if you want, maybe we could offer you something. But I still had like the little voice inside my head saying, you don't have enough experience. So just mm -hmm. continue a little bit more. So I started continue. I continued working and then um, got another opportunity from another teacher that had to um, that had to quit his teaching, okay. the, 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 the teaching, because he had some health issues. Uh, and that was, uh, yeah, I forgot to talk to you about this part. I, I, I participated to the uh, Olympiads uh, in Quebec City. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I brought something to show you. Okay, let's see. I, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> I participated a couple of times to the Olympiads. In fact, when I did my training, I finished my training, and that was a contest, in fact, in uh, all the schools from the area. Mm -hmm. uh, I came in second place at this moment in 2000, came in second place. So I won my second place medal. Okay. So that, you know, that stopped over there. So, okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm cool. glad I gave me a couple of prices and I was really happy with it. But, you know, the experience was awesome. But when I did my high pressure course, the good thing that happened is that it was two years after, and this contest, this contest is always in each and every two years. Mm -hmm. So I participated again. Now I had more experience. I had also my high pressure course on the back of me, and I said, "Hey, why not try it out again?" So I came in in first place here in Sherbrooke. Okay. So, yeah. So came in in first place. That brought me to Quebec City. Uh, to participate to the big Olympiads with all the other regions also. Uh, and there was a guy, I remember his face, you know, I, it, all the way it, it happens, this, there's some uh, little welding booth and in front yeah. there's kind of a, a screen and everyone was walking by, looking at the people that are doing like the, uh, what they have to do and everything. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy that just comes in front of me, an old person with a mustache and he's just like... <laughs> and at this point, you know, I'm I'm struggling. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. sweating my life there. I'm just looking at my project and I'm just like, okay, did I read my plan correctly? What do I have to do? Did I did something wrong? And the guy is still there and he's just like, oh no. And he's looking at his wife and he's just like, look at this. Hey, he did something wrong. And I'm in my booth and I'm just, what the heck going on? Finish the contest and everything. Find out that this guy was the teacher of my direct contestant, oh, the, which was the, the competitor. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So he, he just wanted to distract me, and it worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked. So basically, I had it. I the only color that was missing was the third place. Mm -hmm. So I came in in third place in Quebec City, um, and the second place was the guy. You know the the, the mm -hmm. student from this teacher. Um, and so these competitions are like the skills competitions that happen in Canada, but this is it. Quebec only, or is that's it the it. same skills? That's Quebec only, okay. and the one that wins in Quebec will go to Canada after. Okay, I see. Because Quebec does very well in the skills competitions every year. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're doing really well because. Like I said, there's some passionate people that are on the back of those students that are putting a lot of energy. Uh, and that is just astonishing. You know, the uh, just the, the the way it happens, the, the, the all the atmosphere over there. That's mm -hmm. incredible. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, the, the contestant that I had, the one that, you know, got the second yeah. place. That was the guy, Dominique Desilets. That was the guy that asked me to replace him in Cowansville. Oh, so, okay. yeah. I started doing my university to become a teacher because uh, mm -hmm. we have to do uh, some courses at the university to become a teacher here in Quebec. Uh, so I started doing my uh, courses in university and that's where I uh, ran over him and he's just like, hey, I, come and replace me. Just bring your mm -hmm. uh, resume and they're probably going to hire you right away. So uh, on the Monday, I bring my resume in Cowansville and they say, well, can you start tonight? 
uh, what the hell is going on here? So I, I got the job right away and I started right away in teaching and I never, you know, never let go of this, 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 this opportunity, this job. So I'm in the teaching. Um, I, I've been a teacher for more than 14 years now. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's amazing the journey into teaching that many people take. And this is something I've been trying to explain to a few young people that I've been trying to mentor lately. And one of them got an opportunity to teach. They're great. Fantastic. Also a skills competitor, very good welder, smart kid. Um, he's in his, like he won a few years ago. So now he's in his, you know, mid getting coming up on late twenties. And he said, Oh, I don't know if I want to teach now because I don't feel like I have enough experience to teach. Like just, you said, you're like, yeah, I feel like I need to learn more. And I said, yeah, that's fair. I understand that, that because I, I didn't get into teaching till I was much older. But the problem is, is that the opportunities to teach are very rare, you know, Absolutely. and it's hard to get in as a teacher. I know people that have been applying for years. You have to have that right connection at the right time in the right place to get in quickly because Absolutely. it's hard to be a teacher because teachers don't leave. Once you become a nope. teacher, you're there forever. You never leave. Well, <laughs> you know what? The, the way it is and and. That's what I'm explaining because we have two new teachers right now that we mm -hmm. hired. Uh, one we hired two years ago and one that just started this year. And w what I just told them is that you need to have this passion inside of you. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. everyone can become a teacher. But the thing is that if you want to stay in this type of job, you need to have a passion, which is to help the others, mm -hmm. to make them grow. And, you know, the final result is not important. What you need to do is make a change in the life of those guys that's the only yeah. thing you need to do even if if your students is is quitting the, the you know in two weeks after he started well you need to remember that you did something for him why mm -hmm. well what you did is that you making confirm that this was not his choice you know so mm -hmm. and and be truthful to those guys that you know that's that's what i'm always telling them but if you want to stay in this environment is that you need to be true to yourself and you need to tell also the right stuff to the students. It's, 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 you know, you can see it already in someone. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be a good teacher or not? I, I could, you know, we, we, we had some guys that been, you know, in the, 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 the skill contest and everything that went really good. But once they're in front of a big classroom, 18 and more students, they just freeze, you know, they're just like, I'm not able to do it. You know? Yeah, and managing all the different personalities and the different way people learn. And and, and as a teacher, you're going to repeat yourself a thousand times a day. You just have to get <laughs> used to it. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And years and years after and mm -hmm, so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So for the people that are listening, there's a couple of interesting things there. First of all, you know, you have to go to university to be a teacher. So every province in Canada has their own requirements of what it takes to be a teacher for a trades college or vocational school and to teach uh you know welding specifically let's talk about welding so in quebec is this for the entire province a standard that you must have uh you know these education courses and then what about on the welding experience what what what's the expectation of experience for welding they they don't well you know in the school over here the only thing they ask for is to have uh good knowledge and good skills be good with the students, be able to mm -hmm. manage a classroom. That's the only thing they're asking. Uh, and, and you know, uh, uh, how can I say that? Someone from the school board doesn't know, you know, if the guy has a lot of experience, but always the same experience on the same piece of metal and the same, you know, mm -hmm. repetitive work and so on, they're not looking for that. How many years he's been working in the industry? Okay, we're going to take him because he's been working for a lot of years. Now, to have a contract, as a teacher, you have to go to university. Mm -hmm. If you don't start university, well, you have a lot of time. I don't remember. I think it's, uh, you have 10 years to finish uh, the 130 credits at university. Uh, I'm saying that like that, but I, I you know, I'm, it's been a while <laughs> since I haven't got mm -hmm. to all of that, but you have a lot of time ahead to do it. And the courses are done during the weekend. So, you know, you can still work during the week and do your course at university during the, during the weekend without any problem. So it's easy to do. 
The only thing is that there's a lot of investment. There's a lot of energy that you have to put in there. There's a lot of work that is asked from the university to finish the whole, uh, to have your whole diploma. Mm -hmm. I was lucky. I was lucky because when I uh, went to the university, that was the last year that they they were given the certificate for the teachers. But the only thing is that I can only teach in vocational training. I cannot teach to high school. That's the I only uh, difference. Mm -hmm. But now <laughs> if they're following their path in the um, the university, they can teach wherever they want. They can go at kindergarten. They can go uh, preschool, wherever they want. They have their teaching diploma as the regular teachers. Okay. So there's there's the educational part in terms of being able to manage the class and all that. Yeah. And then on the welding side, you know, just X number of years of experience. But, you know, when we talk about the standardized skills across Canada, which is very important when, you, when you're trying to promote the trades, you know, is there equivalent to the red seal in Quebec that someone could say, you know, you must have this level of welding skill or this piece of paper or, or diploma of welding in order to to be a teacher or a trainer. No, no. no. Uh, in fact, the only thing they're they're not even as asking if uh, they uh, they did some uh, uh, CWB or bending test or whatever. You know, they're not asking for anything. Uh, you have your years of experience, and that's it. It's it's really awkward here in Quebec. The mm -hmm. uh, the welders. It's it's not it's not a trade. It's an occupation here welding. Okay. So it's not like there's yes, there's accreditation if you need to have some to go and and and, and do some special contracts. Mm -hmm. Like but if you're overall, working with the iron workers or something, you need CWB tickets or whatever. Yeah, that's it. That's it. If you're working on construction sites, for example, mm -hmm. yes, you're going to need your CWB accreditation, a eh? uh, 47.1, mm -hmm. uh, 59.2, and so on. But if if you know if you're a teacher, you don't need any any of those. Uh, so they're not asking for anything. The good thing is that the people that are in place like me, uh, we're, we're taking the time to evaluate each and every person that are coming in. Uh, we can see right away if the, you know, if it takes an hour and a half for the person to set up a, a gas metal <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, a MIG welding machine, you're just a like, MIG welder. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going to go next. with the other guy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. But, you know, we're, we're making them do some tests. But there's no pre-requirement that are really asked for uh, any of the teachers. That is so interesting because every province is different. So I'm in Saskatchewan. I live in Saskatchewan. I work in okay. Saskatchewan. And in Saskatchewan, you have to have a red seal. You have to, and two years post. So after your red seal, you have to work as a red seal for minimum two years before you can even apply. And that makes but, a lot of sense. Yeah, I think so too. But we don't require um, the university. Okay which I think you do also need. Now, that's changing now. So now after you get into college and you become a welding teacher, teacher, they give you five years to get a certificate that helps, you know, with these classes that you take through the college to help you with your training. So I think that's good, but I I think it should almost be both, you know, like the yeah. some education in university because that helps you understand the classrooms and the teaching styles and, you know, creating lesson plans and all these things that are very important. Absolutely. And then the red seal or some equivalent or some form of level to, to do it. And, you know, BC, Saskatchewan, Alberta, Manitoba, Ontario, everyone is different. Even Ontario by jurisdiction is different. So even some yeah. parts of Ontario yeah. is different than others. And so like, yeah. I've never understood how it works in Quebec. So that's very interesting. And, and the thing is that there's a shortage of teachers right now. Eh? So we mm -hmm. need teachers. So, there's a lot of schools that won't even ask for a DP completed. They're going to say, okay, so even if you don't have your diploma, you've been working in the industry, we're going to take you. It's, it's, it's For me, I find this kind of bizarre because, you mm -hmm. know, that's the entry point. But, you know, there, there's some that are not, not even asking for it. So, well, And, you know, when I travel through the U.S. and other countries, you know, sometimes you see how the lack of standardization affects training because, yeah. you know, you can have two training centers side by side on the same street. They both say welding school, you know, and then the students graduate from each of the schools and they're two totally different things. Absolutely. You know, and, and you, and 
if as an employer, like as a company, and I say, and I put in the newspaper or on indeed.com and I say, I need five welders, you know, I'll have two students from here, two students from here and two students from here, 10 people apply. I'll say they're welders, all have diplomas, but they're all different, all different Absolutely. training, all different standards. That makes yeah. it very hard for the industry. You know, Absolutely. we talk about the shortage of welders, but it's also about the success of welders. Yes. And what they're asking us more and more is that you have to be able to teach because our courses, 1800 hours is cut out in 29 modules. So mm -hmm. what they are telling us is that, you know, a good teacher is supposed to be good to teach the 29 modules. So there's no specialist, in fact. So, you know, even if you have a hard time welding with stick welding, where are you going to teach it anyways? You know, mm -hmm. so. That's really, you know, that's Tricky. not that's not a way to go. That's not <laughs> yeah, a, a good yeah. way to go. But all right, that's the way it is. Yeah. So this is a good time to take our break for our for our supporters and our and our advertisers. So we're going to take a big, quick commercial break here, and we'll be right back on the CWB Association podcast with Jonathan. Don't go anywhere. All right, and we are back here at the CWB Association podcast. My name is Max Saron. Thanks for tuning into this episode today with Jonathan Corvo from Quebec, from the Lexing, Lex, Lenoxville, Lenoxville Vocational Training Center. There we go. Um, I'm learning lots here, and I love this conversation. You know, we're talking about the difference in trainings and, you know, the, the, the different ways that it gets taught in Quebec. But I think one of the things that I missed here that's maybe most obvious to people is that you teach for an English training center in Quebec. Yep. Now, what, what is the difference, perhaps, and this is an ignorant comment, but I'm just asking, what is the difference between an English training center and perhaps your French-speaking, um, you know, one across the street training center? Is it the same curriculum, just in different languages, or is it different? The course is supposed to be the same. Uh, the course is written by the Gouvernement du Québec, so it's given to us, and we have strict measures to follow. Uh, but still we can modulate some, you know, some hours and we can work with it a little bit. Um, but normally the 1800 hours that I'm giving the exercises, the evaluation, uh, the theory, the hours, the amount of time for each of the module is supposed to be the same in each of the other region. Also, even from mm -hmm. the center across the road over here, it's supposed to be the same thing. So our students are supposed to be standardized a little. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're supposed to be fitting in, you know, uh, they, they're supposed to fit in all the industries that we have here in Quebec. Uh, the bad thing is that our program has been written in 1998 and it's never been changed. So there's a lot oh, of process yeah. that we're not using anymore. Say uh, uh, plasma arc welding, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, there was only one company that was using it here in Quebec and they're not using it anymore. Uh, but still, it's in the program. We're mm -hmm. talking about it, but we're not showing them and we're not making them try it out because, you know, our machine, we don't have the parts to repair the machines anymore. Uh, but still, we had to change or how can we say that to, to modify to, modify to tweak mm -hmm. our modules so that we could fit or get in accordance with the new technology. So pulse welding, for example, even with TIG, uh, MIG. Uh, aluminum made out of pulse. Um, so that, the, you know, those are all big changes. It's not in the program now, but still we're teaching it because all of the industries are going forward with the, forward with uh, those welding process. So there's, there's a lot of things that we can change. So that makes a little bit makes us a little bit different from one center to another. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some projects that we're changing. But, uh, you know, uh, all the teachers, uh, it's really up to the teachers to decide, you know, absolutely. And, and, and there's a, there's a, there's a center in Windsor. There's another center in Cowansville. There's a, a center in Sherbrooke. We all talk together. We all sit down. We're all friends. We're not, we're always talking together each and every mm -hmm. year. What are we going to do? What type of project we're supposed to be doing and so on? Is there something that we can reevaluate? So, you know, the, we're in constant evolution according to the companies. Uh, we don't have any robotic welding uh, now, but still there's some schools that, 
you know, they bought some uh, robotic welding, uh, some robot, whatever. They they brought it in the school and they're teaching it anyways. Uh, plasma cutting table, for example, mm -hmm. CNC plasma cutting table. Uh, it's not in the program, but still, how many companies are using that? Eh? So yeah. we have to show it to the students. Basically, uh, I would that would be nice to make you uh, do a little tour of the shop, but uh, uh, you, you would see that we're trying as most as we can to cover everything that you know they will probably touch or they will probably see in an mm -hmm. industry. So how does that work for like funding? You know, because the way funding works is that the government's only going to fund for what's written in the paper. They're not going to fund for something that is just an idea or something that's happening. And if the curriculum hasn't changed since 1998, who's in charge of changing it? How often should I'm sure you do, there must be a review process every two or four years like the rest of the country. You know, there must be something. But if it hasn't changed in 24 years, why is it not changing now? You know, why is it holding back? It was supposed to change two years ago, in fact. Uh, mm -hmm. We sat down, a couple of teachers. Uh, there was a, a, a person in charge of the new program. Uh, it it was supposed to change, but with the COVID and you know everything that happened, they put that on the ice and they say, well, we're going to focus on the one that, uh, like machining techniques, for example, it changed uh, two years ago and it's not implemented in all of the school yet. There's still some changes that needs to be done. We're in the English sector. Uh, that program needs to be translated for us. Sometimes mm. we have it a little bit later on. So there's some schools that, you know, they had the program two years ago and now and we have ours. Have it, yeah. That's mm -hmm. it. So, so for the funding, uh, we're constantly asking for money to the government because, yes, the material cost changed a lot. Uh, we're still looking forward to have the new program with the new real cost of the material, just to, mm -hmm. to let you know, like a quarter inch plate, a four by eight quarter inch plate in 1998, you know, you were paying less than a hundred bucks for it. Yeah. Like now, 95 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> now it's 468. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, 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 we are trying our best to, you know, reduce our project or to go more with sheet metal. Um, and by doing that, we lower our costs, uh, still the government, well, we ask every year to, you know, a little bit more money, a little a bigger envelope because we spend this amount of money. Uh, they always pay for it, but still it's not easy. It's really not yeah. easy. Uh, the gas, you know, the, the oh, argon, <laughs> argon many years ago. <laughs> You know, I just looked at it this morning, 154 for a filling, uh, a bottle of argon. I'm just like, okay. Like $27. <laughs> nah, that's incredible. That is just <laughs> astonishing. So, uh, yeah, we, we, fortunately, we have budgets for that. So normally for us, for example, every student bring a little bit of money. Um, we have. Uh, our budget this year is about 150,000 just in the material. Uh, but it's based on the registration that we have. So if there's more students that are coming in, well, they're not counted in the registration. So we have to take, you know, Limit do the best down. we can yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do the best we can. And, and probably some other teacher will uh, approve me on that is that, you know, the students are not the one that are uh, redoing uh, a lot of weld on the same coupons. Uh, mm -hmm. So when they did like uh, half of it, they throw it in the garbage and they restart it with a brand new one. No, so no, no, basically, no, no. Uh, no, no, that's it. That's it. So, so now we're not throwing everything in the garbage bin. We're putting that on the table and it, if it can be re reused while well, we're going to be re reusing it. So there, you know, it's, it's a different mindset that we had many years ago but still you know i i think it's a good thing because the people are going to see more that you know money is important mm -hmm. uh don't throw that in the garbage we can still reuse it for something when i did my course in 1998 the piece was not good and it was welded half of it i was throwing it in the garbage and no one was looking over it and now i'm the one that is picking the stuff out of the bin and saying <laughs> hey you can do some other beads over that mm -hmm. so it it changed a bit on that but still we're we're not losing money that's the yeah. thing 
uh, we're still able by you know uh, selling projects. So many years ago, the projects we were doing, when they were done, they were evaluated and then thrown in the garbage. Uh, mm -hmm. Now we're trying to have projects that will be reusable uh, or that could be sold to fire pits other people. Or, yeah. Absolutely, fire pits. We're doing a snowplow for four wheelers. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 a motor, a uh, motor, uh, jack or, uh, stand, yeah. stand uh, you know, uh, jack stands, uh, for cars, if they want to repair it, uh, car ramps, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we're doing that the students are keeping. They, 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 they buy for a certain amount of material, but there's a lot that is, that is already paid by the government, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, the students are paying for some amount of the material and then. You know they can work on their car they can do whatever they want with that as long as you know they use it correctly but uh, we have to rethink the project on you know what type of material we're going to be using uh the thickness uh are we going to be using tubing or we're going to use our big bend press and bend our own tubing out of sheet metal so yeah. you know th those are all things that we're trying to think about each and every year when we restart and we see our budget we're just like okay last year we did that we didn't you know We've been able to uh, to to not spend too much money, but yeah. this year this year is another challenge. So let's think about it. So each and every year we're uh, rethinking of the projects that we're doing. Now, and, how you know, is the how is the involvement for your school or the schools that you've worked at in terms of community involvement? You know, reaching out to businesses, you know, welding companies that maybe access their scrap or get donations or work with organizations for funding you know are you guys working with stuff like that we are really lucky uh we have some industries that are really close to our center that have been giving us a lot of material fortunately those the material that they've been giving us is material that we're not able to share on our machine because it's too hard <laughs> yeah. but still you know we're going to be able to figure out some projects and figure out some stuff that the students are going to be working on them so um it's it's always trying to rethink the projects but yes there's a lot of companies that are giving us some material we had the 56 56 8 by 8 quarter inch plate that has been given to us uh, just before we got to vacation and totally free. We only had to pay for the transportation. So that was just astonishing. When we mm -hmm. saw the material, we're just like, OK, we have a big shop. Lucky for us, we have some place to store it. But wow, that will help us a lot. Um, many industries are giving us their material because it's not, you know, the stamp is not readable anymore. So they're not able to put that in contract and anything. So we're going to be using it for coupons or uh, stuff that they're going to be throwing in the garbage anyway. Burned up anyways, so, yeah. Absolutely, and they they learn as well on a rusted piece of metal than on a perfectly brand new piece of metal. In fact, I think that the experience that they're going to gain on rusted pieces is probably a little bit better than the one that is brand new. Yeah, it so, takes some time to clean and prep and all that important stuff, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we, we are really lucky with that. Uh, this year, that's the first year that, I, uh, that, I, um, that I've been calling the, um, the uh, CWB Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and we were really lucky. Everything has been approved. So uh, we've asked for a donation for materials. Well, not, not material because we needed a little update in our shop. Uh, so we ask for it and we ask for a welding simulator, which we don't have. Normally we borrow it from another school and they accept it. So it's a 50-50 partnership. We pay 50 of it and the foundation will pay the other 50%. So that's that's really awesome. Uh, so our students are going to benefit for that. Well, so, yeah, that, you know, we, within the CWB, we have a, a fantastic guy that works for the foundation, uh, Josh Fort, Joshua Fortin, which yeah. I'm sure you've met now and he's, Bilingual, he's he's Quebecer, and you know we last year did our first weld industry days in French online okay. virtual, right? So one of the things that I'm trying to do as a director of the association is, you know, figure out how do we connect with the Quebec market better in terms of the schools, the students, the, you know, the the training centers and stuff like that. And one of them is obviously money. Okay, yeah, the foundation that's that's what they do. They they fund money. They're a charity, and you know I'm. Joshua told me that from the weld industry days that we did, the first one ever in French, 
he got something like 30 some applications for from schools for funding in Quebec, which is awesome because the more the better. You know what I mean? Yeah. The more people that yeah. apply for money, the better. Yeah. But then that really put the seed in me to be like, okay, well, that is great. But what what about the community involvement? Because the association is about volunteers and community. And we have a chapter, we have a Quebec chapter that runs out yeah. of Montreal that should be involved, but the, we're not making all the connections we need to make. So, yeah. you know, that's that. I guess my question to you is how could the association, the member side, the, you know, where we have volunteers, because there's also money there, you know, there's funding Absolutely. there, but it's done in a different way. It's not an application where you just ask for money for a product with the association. It's a, uh, you run an event and we help you run an event and we help you raise money through, you know, grassroots, uh, you know, fundraising. Yeah. And what can we do to help on that level? How can we get, get into Quebec better? You know, you know what it, you, you do everything right. The only thing is for us to reach to you guys. That's yeah. the only thing. I think that there's a lot of schools that just, Yes, they know that CWB is there for the bent test and for the one to be, you know, able to work on structure and to weld outside and whatever, you know, or go on construction site. You need that. But what else about CWB? So basically what I'm thinking is uh, Joshua is probably one of the best person to go from school to school and go talk to all the teachers and be able to sit down with them and ask, you know, asking them not what do you need, but hey, that's what we can offer you because you mm -hmm. have so many things that you can offer. That's astonishing. <laughs> all the, all the, 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 the acorn site, for example, uh, a couple of years ago, I didn't know at all about this. And we started to have our own Moodle and I cannot count how many <laughs> hours I've worked on that to put all my documentation. And that was one of my friends, Sebastien Jodouin, that is also a teacher. We've worked together on that and we were not sleeping at night, just putting material <laughs> on that. But geez, you had an acorn site with everything on it. And you know, I was just like, when I saw that, I was like, why didn't anyone talk to me about this? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just that, you know, the, 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 the link or the the um the, the first approach is not done. Mm -hmm. um, once I met uh, Joshua the first time, uh, I called right away my friends in Windsor and I said, hey guys, call those guys, yeah. call them. They're going to go and see you. And it's not only for money, it's also for the platform. It's also mm -hmm. how to set up some material that is going to be useful. Uh, you were talking about uh, Nadia a couple of minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, um, I've started, uh, well, we, we, we made a, a kind of a comedy, uh, a couple of teachers together, different school board. We started working with Trent Conrad, uh, mm -hmm. about the platform for, uh, the documentation for Quebec. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically we have documentation that is provided from what we call the CEMEC, the Centre d'élaboration des mesures uh, d'évaluation du Québec. That's all paid by the government. But our, the English sector, we don't have anything. But when I saw the acorn, when I saw the documentation that you had, I was just like, hey, why aren't we using this? This is made by welders for welders. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm taking this from this book, I'm taking that from this book and this other book and so on. It's welder for welder. Wow, that documentation is just awesome. The only problem is that you have the documentation in English only, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. Bilingual is coming. I know, I know Trent's working on it. I'm sure he's told you. <laughs> but, but still, we've worked mm -hmm. to uh, build it up as the books that we have in French, which is kind of more an individual learning. You have, mm -hmm. some, uh, you have some reading and some understanding to do, and then you have a questionnaire and so on. So we started building our books the same way the acorn books that was that were provided by Trent we started working on this with Nadia Nadia and um it was starting to go well but you know uh i don't probably some people moved around and then after uh uh no news about nothing and some of the guys that we were working with well they didn't have any contracts uh the year after and so mm -hmm. on so you know that's the part that is hard to, to, to get everyone on the same boat, 
and to keep those guys together. Keep them in the boat, yeah. Oh, until boy, the project is done. Yeah. It's so hard. Well, now Nadia works for me, so she's not going anywhere. If, if Nadia, <laughs> if you're listening to this, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, she was my point for the first weld industry day. So when I took over at the association, I said, you know, we've never done a French. It was kind of shocking. You know, we've been a uh, association for a hundred years, a hundred and one years now, and we've never had a French, you know, event in this country. Yeah. And you look, I look at yeah. the statistics and almost a third of all the welding in Canada is done in Quebec. So you're telling me that somehow this entire area has been missed, you know, and I have staff that is fully bilingual. Okay, well, let's get on this. So we did our first event with Joshua and Nadia working together. And it was fantastic. It was full. Like all the booths were full. We had a great thing. And so that was all online. So now for this year, we're thinking, should we be in person? Should we find maybe a company? Like a, we have great companies in Quebec that help us like Henlex. Henlex is with Michel Gagnon. He's a fantastic man. He's always helping. Like maybe we could do it at one of his facilities. Maybe we do something in person for the teachers. So we're thinking about why don't this. You, but... uh, why don't you ask for a school? Yeah. And that's what we said. Maybe we looked at school. We already talked to Joshua about this. Maybe we could do it at a school. Um, we're looking at December of this year. So, you know, there's the bug in your ear. First week of the <laughs> first week of December, we are or last week of November around there. We're looking to do event for French and I'm not bilingual, but I would love to come and support and do what I can. But I have on my staff bilingual so it can it can happen, you know, yeah. and and I want to I want to capture the welders and the engineers that speak French and francophone. And I want them to join the local association because that is how I get told what they need. And it's, and that is very much about helping like the local high school on the day to day, not the hundred thousand dollar machine, not the quarter million dollar yep. investment, but you know what? You need $500 welding up rod oven. Okay. We, we can help with that. I can help raise money for that. Or, you know, welding jackets for everybody, for all your students. I can help with that. Those things yep. that are very, also very important. And sometimes, Hard to get, you know, or new welding, amps, anything small like that. But the only way we can get that done is if people become involved, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that is one of the, the 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 main issue that we have is that when they hire a teacher uh, here in Quebec, it's not like we're going to give you like 20% of a task. We're not going <laughs> to give you like, it's a full task right away. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you need to learn how to become a teacher. You need to learn the manage the class management. You need to learn how to build up your modules. You need, there's so many things that you need to learn. And, and, you know, the five, the, the first five years, boy, that's a lot of work for those <laughs> guys. So the involvement is probably pretty low. And I would yeah. say that there's a lot of young uh, teachers now uh, in every of the schools that 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 we can uh, that we can see that we can visit, but I, I would mm -hmm. oh absolutely absolutely absolutely. I find that the best volunteers we have are those that are in the 30s and 40s. You know, they already got past the the busy time of life when it's the babies and and the new career and climbing. And now in your 30s and 40s, you're more comfortable and you have now a little bit more time to help volunteer and and be a part of associations and member yep. groups and boards and, Absolutely. And, and that stuff. But then once you get past 50, 60, then it's the involvement goes back down yeah. and, and because you're, you're tired and you want to retire and enjoy life. So, but it all and, depends. Eh? I, mm -hmm, I had mm -hmm. one of my coworker, Rosa Ouellette, that was working in Cowansville, you know, a, that was the kind of guy that was always, you know, he, he was 60, uh, 65 and he was still playing his hockey in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> getting in the school and getting out of the school like at 530 and without asking for more than that, you know, he, mm -hmm. he was just like always on the task, the involvement. Uh, uh, when it was for the Olympiads, he was putting a lot of time and energy on, the, you know, but mm -hmm. there's so many different people <laughs> in the <laughs> teaching environment. I would yeah. say, you know, you know, like the, just to, 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 to continue answering what what the first question that you you brought out saying that what can you do is that you're already doing it the only thing is that where can you find people that would get in, get involved and still continue mm -hmm. uh, that i would say that you know we would have to kind of have a regroupment here in Quebec one teacher per school that would have to go to 
kind of a meeting, kind of a day mm -hmm. that, you Just know, to learn what it's about, you know, not only to learn what it's about, but also to exchange about different practices oh, and yes, to yeah, see idea. the new materials that you're bringing out. And, you know, that just just that would make a big, big, big change because there's um, there's a lot of schools that are, you know, they're just like that. And I don't want to see others. I'm doing my own stuff. And I mm -hmm. just by forcing them to say, hey, we need to see you there just by doing mm -hmm. that, we would probably have more people involved. And that would start by you know, talking to the directions, not talking to you teachers know. right away, but the directions, <laughs> you know, those are the ones that will probably liberate some hours and say, hey, I have someone that can go there. So, so how does, how are the school boards like in Quebec then? You know, are they easy to work through? Are they, do they have the same people stay on? Do they move around quite a bit? You know, I'll be asking Joshua the same thing because that's who <laughs> my contact is because he knows all the school boards in Quebec. But, you know, like, Will will I get support? Let's say, let's pretend I come to the school board and Joshua gives me the contact. I say, okay, I'm the director of the association. I would love to bring everyone in. Maybe we can help even with some funding. We can put everyone together in one school. We can pick a school most central or maybe two or three locations and do a tour. But let's, can you give everyone a, a professional day off paid? Because I know teachers, I was a teacher for many years. You want to have the paid day off, you know, like you don't want to, yeah. lose your yeah. Saturday or you're yeah. not going to go on a Sunday. It yeah. wants to be part of your job. You know, you're going to go yeah. as a training. Absolutely. Day. Will Absolutely. the, do you think the school board will support that? Well, we already have a uh, kind of committees inside of the schools that are for mm -hmm. uh, the teachers to uh, have different trainings. Uh, they, they already give us some trainings about uh, pedagogy or mm -hmm. uh, class management and everything. But when we ask for it, it's never a no. So when we ask for it, they're going to deliberate some hours for it. Okay. Uh, and, and and the school boards are really open for that. They have some foundings. They have some ways to pay their teachers. They have some they have some list of people that can replace the teacher that will go for those courses, those those training or those, you know, uh, those, those uh, get togethers. So. Everyone will be open for it. All right. So I'm going to be calling you after. Ah, again. perfect. Perfect. <laughs> first recruit here. First recruit. <laughs> but I mean, we, we have, like we've had in uh, Quebec, uh, uh, association chapter for many years, decades, but in the last couple of years, it's been very quiet and we haven't ha heard much from the association and it, we are, you know, it's, it's, we, we worry because we want, we want the same funding go. Some, some chapters, you know, are very successful. Alberta. Yeah. Conestoga College and, you know, in Nova Scotia, Saskatchewan, there's, we have 18 chapters in total, about seven or eight are very motivated. And the ones that are very motivated get all the money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're, they're working yeah. and they have yeah. connections and they're going to schools to get all the money. And Absolutely. It's good for them. I love what the work they do, but my job as director is to be concerned about the other chapters that are not as active yeah. because yeah. what can we do? for you to get the support and the funding and, and what can we do to make sure that, you know, if a teacher in the middle of nowhere, Quebec, in the farthest corner of Quebec says, oh, we don't have enough electrodes to finish the course this year. You know, I'm angry with the school board. I'm angry with funding. Okay, that's fine. But give us a call. Give us a call. You know, call your local yeah. Montreal chapter. Because we, we could probably help you, even if yeah. it's just to finish the year. Maybe we don't solve all your problems, but maybe we can help right now. You know what I Absolutely. mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. That would be a good thing also for the students to know about it. Eh? So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and there's something that I'm probably going to call uh, Joshua about it is, you know, have kind of a nice little presentation about, you know, the Welding Foundation, what you're doing to our students. Because there's many students that are, you know, they're doing their uh, their their welding tickets, and they're just like, okay, uh, now what? Now what? That's it. <laughs> That's it. You know, and and I'm I'm always saying to them, go on their website, and then after register, you're gonna have like uh, some infos that are gonna come in in, mm -hmm. in in your mail address. You're gonna have a lot of. Uh, you know, new events that are coming. If you want to become an inspector or whatever, you're going to know when the courses are going to be on. And there's a yeah. lot of information that you can go on that. I'm always saying that to them. But like you said already, you always have to repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat all over again. But when it's someone else from the exterior, 
that tells them that they're they're listening more and then they go forward with it. Yeah, um, I remember when I had my students, I would sit them all in the classroom one day and I just sit them all down. I said, okay, everyone's signing up right now. No choice. If you want to cancel later, cancel. But everyone is signing up right now because it. It, help, it helps your career and it's free. Like, come on. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's incredible. Eh? I did that two years ago also with uh, with my two for you students. That was yeah. uh, that was so funny because there's the, the we think that those guys are really into the Internet stuff and the computer and they're the, we think that they're really good. Eh? They didn't even know how to type their name on the computer. I was just like, <laughs> guys, guys, where were you? Were you in a cavern or something? That's incredible. So I registered all of them. Uh, I had like uh, 14 guys and I made the registration for all of them. And I was just like, okay, now you're going to have information. And yes, that, you know, you're going to have uh, some good stuff that are going to come in and, 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 and you're going to be aware about different stuff that is, coming around in Canada. There's a lot of uh, my students that are starting their courses over here. And then they say, I want to go work in BC. I want to go work in Alberta. Well, okay. Yeah. Good. Perfect. That's awesome. But you know, go on the CWB <laughs> website. Yeah. There's also a place where they have some uh, enrollment and jobs and stuff yeah. like that that is written in there. So, Hey, go for it. That it's, it's like we have to take their end and do it for them. Yeah. But, uh, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. Yeah. And that's, it's been that way since day one. So it's not new. <laughs> no, no. And I've been like that many, many a couple yeah. of years ago. So, you know, <laughs> people change. People yeah, change. People, we get, we get old and we get wise or wiser. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, we push so stuff on the other desk. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> now, you know, in, in terms of the future, you know, like, what? Well, how do you see the, the school systems, the training programs in Quebec moving forward. You know, we talked about skills and you guys are very good at the skills competitions every year. You know, I, I got to be a mentor for the gold winner for Canada a couple of years back. Adam Sebastian is fantastic uh, welder, but you know, we were most concerned about the Quebec welders. That's the, <laughs> that was the ones because they, they win very often, you know, and yep. we were like, you know, what are they doing over in Quebec? It's a big secret. Nobody knows because they Quebec is not really a part of apprenticeship, you know, like the rest of the country is a part of, but when I ask it's apprenticeship, yeah. it's different. When I ask apprenticeship, is Quebec a part of apprenticeship? Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Quebec's a part of apprenticeship. Okay. How? And that's where it gets tricky. Yeah. Cause it's, you said it earlier, you said it's a vocation, not a trade, or I think is what you said or something like it's that. It's an occupation. Yeah. It's an, an occupation. occupation. And so can you become a red seal welder in Quebec? If I wanted to, Yep. Could I? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have to. Uh, hey, boy, there's there. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a headache. <laughs> hey, uh, I had so many different stories about this. Uh, mm -hmm. I I asked to uh, CWB representatives. I asked for guys that did their test. Uh, many years ago, we had the the the, the red the red seal apprenticeship that was in the uh, industries. And the guy were doing that and they were doing that basically just for the money, not the apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. they, they were able to earn like, uh, I think it was 3000 or something. I don't remember, but Hey, they got the money at the end of the apprenticeship, but they never got the diploma. Why? Because they had to do some tests. The final test. Yeah. The final test to have their diploma. And, and it's and not, it has to be in an apprenticeship accredited site. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of my students, he got through all the process. Uh, he got his red seal and everything. And he said, it's a very long process for someone who is not in the industry, who has not filled in the apprenticeship um, hours. Book. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. The thing is that I don't know why we're doing 1800 hours over here. We're doing a lot of theory mm -hmm. uh, on the welding process. Basically, we're covering everything that needs to be covered. We're talking about metallurgy. We're talking about well distortion. We're talking about uh, the different type of filler metal, the different gases, uh, the, the, the new technology, the, 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 the electricity, everything is covered. Mm -hmm. why, why didn't anyone from the Red Seal or somewhere just 
sat down with us and say, okay, so a part of the apprenticeship, you know, uh, booklet that they're doing in the rest mm -hmm. of the Canada, we can, you know, give a certain amount of time and be able to do just the assessment, just the test, but it's not like it. So I don't know what to say, but it's yeah, just Yeah, no, like, it's tricky because it, I remember I wrote it down here, right? When you started talking, you said, my program is 1800 hours. And I thought, you know, that's an important thing to ask because in the West, West, the West is very, West of Canada is very apprenticeship heavy. Like most of the apprentices in Canada is in the West. So like, you know, myself, I have two red seals and a blue seal, you know, all of us are, that's the way we kind of start in the welding. You have to get your red seal if you want to yeah. be successful. Okay. But every course I ever took in welding was like, okay, this course is 600 hours. This is 400 hours because you know, those hours are going, they're going to come sit and plug yeah. into this path for the Red Seal someday. That's it. Now, now you, your course, you come out with 1800 hours, you get your diploma, you finish your good, great welder, great program, everyone's happy. But what does the 1800 hours mean? What is it for? Do I take it somewhere and say, okay, Quebec school board, I have 1800 hours. This means something. I can add to it. I can grow it. Where does it fit? I don't even know. I don't no. even know. And no. and you know what? At a certain point, I stopped asking questions because everyone gave me different answers. So no. I said, you know, if, if you're not able to answer me correctly or give me the right path or the, the right way that I can explain to my students, I'm just not going to talk about it anymore. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of sad because for me, that's probably like, the, the 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 best trade you can do welding and fitting it's 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 mm -hmm. it shows you everything uh according to what you're going to need in life you know you have the basic electricity you have how to use a measuring tape mm -hmm. <laughs> first off uh plan reading um how math to, advanced like better math, math skills yeah. absolutely so there's so many things in that course that it's so complete that once you're finished, you can you can fit in every different type of training that you're going to be doing, you know? So why, at the end of my training, at the end of my 1,800 hours, can that, can, can that be recognized somewhere for the Red Seal? And there, there must be I a way don't. because a Red Seal program generally in most of the countries is about 5,400 hours. So, you know, 1,800 hours, you're almost halfway there, you know? Yeah. So, like, I mean, there's got to be a way to, and I'm sure there is. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure there is absolutely yeah, one of the, and one of the projects I'm working on right now is trying to organize, you know, at our level, the pathways for welders, try to organize it for like anybody. So you a teach a student, a employer can come to our CWB website because I know how confusing it is, especially yeah. if you start going from province to province, you just spin your head out. So it's like, <laughs> absolutely. OK, well, can I just go to one website where I just click my province, Red Seal Welder. How do I get there? And poop, 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 this school, this training center, this blah, blah, blah. And okay, yeah. fine. Now, next question. I went to school in Alberta. Now I want to go work in Quebec. What is transferable and what is not? Yeah. Because that is yeah. very important to know. You know, CWB, okay, that's an easy one. We know CWB is good for the whole country. Yeah. But CWB is only practical assessment, not Absolutely. theory. No, you know, that's it. apprenticeship is theory. Yeah. So if you want to prove you learned the theory, you need to have those apprenticeship years, one, two, or three, or ABC, or whatever system you're using, but some way to account for it. And, you know, I'm sure Quebec has a system, but it, it's buried somewhere. There, there's, I, I'm sure that there's something, that there's mm -hmm. a way to do it, I'm sure. But like I said, there's so many different people that, you know, gave me different answers that I just drop the mm -hmm. ball on it. And I said, okay, uh, let, let's talk about something else. Because one other thing is that all of our companies over here in Quebec, we're not asking for the Red Seal. Yeah, it's not a thing. Because if you're not training no. it, who cares? No. Right? no. And there's yeah. all other companies that are not even asking for a DEP diploma. So, uh, you know, they and they, some companies, they don't want to have students that did their DEP because they can pay them less than what they're supposed mm. to. You know, so... Basically, uh, every companies are different surrounding that. Um, yeah. We see more and more the companies coming towards us. We see more and more companies. When we started the Alternance Travail Etude, 
more and more companies are involved in there because we're putting students in their shop. We're putting students in their own working environment so they can train them exactly where they're going to be. Yeah. But still, those training, those trainees won't be able to maybe fit in other type of industries. Yeah. Or so, go to another province. Or go to another province. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, your, mm. your, your, your way of welding, uh, you know, it, it, maybe you're doing more high pressure piping uh, in Alberta than we're doing here in Quebec. Mm -hmm. You know, so our training is different towards that. So we have a 60, 600 hour extra training to do our high pressure welding. Uh, so, you know, it's, mm -hmm. It, it would be so, so <laughs> nice to be standardizing everything, to have everything on the same level, to, you know, that would be so that has easy for us after. And, and, you know, and I, I don't know I've why been, it's so complicated. Oh, dude, if I could tell you, I've been a part of harmonization projects across this country for a decade now. And the fights that go down between provincial legislators between provinces over the same thing. My province does more manufacturing, so we will need to do high frequency pulse welding and we need to do this and we need to do that. The next province says, you know, we want our students to learn oxy fuel welding. What? Yeah. And then, like, I mean, and then so everyone ends up just fighting. Everyone wants to do what's best for their province. And then standardization just kind of falls out the window. Absolutely. And and, yeah. and it's it's very difficult to find like the magic number or the magic type of processes and education that makes everybody happy. You know, we could say very well, that broad, will be impossible. That will be impossible. There's always someone that will say, mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't cover that part. You didn't have enough time in that process, or you didn't do this or that. That's right. But still, you know, there's some companies that are really specific. They have their own way of doing it. And how can I train my guy, all of my guys, <laughs> what you're the doing over thing, there? Uh, that's it. That's it. And, and, yeah. and there's none of those guys that will go work for you because we know what you're asking for, you know? So it, it's, it's kind of a nonsense. I can totally understand what you're mm -hmm. saying right now. But we know there is one thing that we have in Canada, though, that saves our butt compared to other countries. Is that we have the NOA, right? The the yeah. R the RHOS now. You know, it's uh, we. I can go on the computer right now to anybody who wants to argue with me, and they say, "Well, what is a welder in Canada?" I can show you. I can go right to the website of Canada, the government of Canada, and it'll say tool use, MIG stick, TIG, and everyone can fight over how much of each, but it's all there. Yeah. You know, some will say, "Well, we should be eighty percent this and twenty percent that." The other province says the opposite, but at the end of the day. We do have our standards, right? We do have our yeah. standards. We do have yeah. our, 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 what we consider to be, you know, the, the re minimum requirements of what a welder should be. And in terms of, you brought up a fantastic point, like some companies just don't care. They don't want trained welders. They don't want high end stuff because they feel that they will ask for too much money and it'll just be too expensive to run their companies. And you know what I say to them? That's okay. That's okay. Because those kind of companies will only attract a certain amount of welder and Absolutely. they'll only attract a certain type of person. And that's yeah. fine because they need jobs too. There's space for everybody. So if your company only makes brackets that hold Slurpee cups for 7-Eleven and that's the only product you make and it's only one pack on one piece of metal and that is the only thing you do all day and that's $12 an hour, so be it. But you know what? If you have an ambitious uh, you know, person that comes to your company, they might work there six months and you know what they're going to do? They're going to leave. They're going to leave. That's right. And that's fine because that's their right. And if they want to do better, they can do better. And they'll end up at your school being like, okay, I'm, I don't want to make $12 no more. I want to make $20. Absolutely. So I need training. Right. So yep. it's everything in the end works out. The only thing I get scared of is when you see large companies starting to go to no, no standards. Cause then it's like, okay, well then your product, how do we know your product is good? You know, like how can we that's trust? It. Right? That's it. That's it. And, and, and this kind of, standardization over here in Quebec, it took a while before it got settled up. You mm -hmm. know, now it's much better than 14 years ago, but hey boy, it was kind of <laughs> weird to see what was going on over here. You know, everyone was building trailers in their backyards and selling them to anyone's. And, you know, you're just like, 
You okay. can't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm the one that is going to follow you on the road with my family on the back of me. Mm -hmm. So, but it's it's much better. The good thing that we have here is that uh, we have um, what we call a service aux entreprises. So it's it's for the companies to the companies. So there's a lot of companies that are calling us saying that, hey, we need to train that guy specifically for that. And we know that this guy will stay there. So mm -hmm. we build up a course just for that person. And we say, okay, now you're going to come in during the weekend and we're going to train you right on this. And we're going to show you the right stuff, how to do mm -hmm. it correctly. Not what your boss is telling you, but how to do it correctly. Uh, last year, we had a guy that was doing some uh, uh, milk containers. We said, you're doing that with TIG? Is it purged? Well, no, I'm not purging. Okay, that's the first mistake. That's mm -hmm. one of the first mistakes. So erase everything that you've learned so far, and we're going to start from there. So we yeah. started up all over again. Now he's doing something much better than it than it was at the beginning. So that's a good thing that we have kind of people that are trusting more and more the centers compared to many years ago, people that are coming in our centers, not only for the DP, the whole diploma process, but sometimes just for Some training. a, certain, a yeah. certain module. And that's one thing that we're able to do is that we can register you for that specific module. You're, you're repairing your own farm equipment in, uh, in your farm. Do you Perfect. just need to know how to do 6013? And with the AC machine, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Come over here. We're going to show you everything that is surrounding. We're going to talk about the electricity. We're going to talk about the welding process, different electrode, how to keep your electrode, how to make sure that, you know, you're doing a good bead, how to evaluate your beads and everything. And then after, yes, we're going to test you out just to see if you're good. And that will be it. So a training can be 15 hours. It can be 150 hours. So it's all according to different people. So that's one of the opportunity that we have that we're giving right now. Um, and, and what is good, like I said, what is good is that the industries are coming more and more to see us. The industries are, are able to come and see us more and more because there's no more like that kind of little barrier that, hey, I'm a DEP teacher. I cannot do more than that. Now we're opening those mm -hmm. barriers. We're okay. We need people to come in our center, uh, so you know we're gonna suit your 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 needs. Uh, so yeah. just ask us what you need, and we're gonna do it. And that will be covered by uh, that will be also. There's uh, some companies, small companies that are coming, and all of their uh, fees are paid by the government. Oh, so, wow! Yeah, yeah. So some of the guys they pay a they pay 120 bucks to have a training uh 10 weekend material uh gas everything, everything included. included even wow. the teacher is there for 120 bucks so that's less you know than the gas just to drive there hey boy that's incredible <laughs> eh so so we see that a little bit more than mm -hmm. than 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 before uh and hopefully now it's going to turn up to 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 be more and more of that because companies need workers they need to have trained workers and by doing this, we're able still to continue giving some training and some courses and some good ways to do mm -hmm. uh, to do the, 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 what they're supposed to be doing. Awesome. Well, we're at the, we're past the hour. We've, we've oh, yeah. past the hour. Yeah, we're killing it. So um, <laughs> we're going to have to wrap it up here. Uh, I want you to talk, tell people a little bit about how to get uh, in touch with your school. How do people check out your college or your vocational center? How do people sign up? How do people in the your area, you know, enroll for your welding program? Really easy. Just go on lvtc.ca and that is our website and you can just register right away on it. You can do a registration online also. Uh, like I said, there's a, there's a lot of different type of training, different trades that we offer over here. Uh, it's a bilingual environment. So even if it's French speaking people, I think that you probably heard that I'm uh, also able to speak French. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're, a, uh, we're a bilingual teaching environment. Uh, very, very friendly, a small school with not a lot of students, small groups, uh, that makes kind of, a, a 
small Fun family, yeah. family, uh, a lot of get-togethers. Now we are we are restarting the barbecues now. We were doing that a couple of years ago, but with the COVID, we couldn't do it anymore. But we're restarting that. So a little uh, get-togethers and barbecue uh, outside when we uh, when we can. So uh, just come over here and we have some passionate people that are going to teach you well, that are going to put their heart on their table to show you what they uh, what they like to do. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan, for taking the time today for, for the podcast. And I, I'm sure the listeners are going to really enjoy the information and, and the stories. It was a really good interview. So thank you. Thanks to you. And it's been a pleasure. And thank you to all the people that have been tuning in and, and staying with the podcast. Stay tuned for the next uh, run coming up. Season three, we're, we're rolling now. So, you know, we're, we're coming up. We're getting, I think we're getting close to a hundred episodes. So thanks to all the people that have been supporting and following the podcast and stay tuned for the next one. We hope you enjoyed the show. 